Welcome back, Gymnasticsville. I'm Midnight Robin. We're here at the University of Illinois at Chicago. Taki Abdullah Simmons is here with me, and we are with the head coach, Charlie Nelson. How you doing? I'm doing well. How are you? Doing great. Doing great. I mean, we just want to start out by saying it was just some great energy out there. This is our first time on campus since uh, NCAAs, but I kind of want to start from there. I think the circuit around gymnastics community is that what you guys did at NCAAs this past year was probably one of the, the greatest competitions produced in a very long time for NCAA Men's Gymnastics. So we just want to talk about, like, how, how did you do that? <laughs> um, UIC is really nicely set up to be able to, to run a really successful championship. Um, we run the Windy City meet every year, you know, which is one of the larger meets across the country. So we, our uh, support staff has, uh, has that under their belt. So the smoothness in which things ran with the championships was a result of their experience with that. But uh, it goes beyond that. Then we have the UIC Pavilion, which I think is the premier gymnastics venue in the country. Yeah. The sight lines are great. The yeah. space on the floor is great. Uh, the new scoreboard that's in there really worked out well. Um, and then we have gymnastics all over the Chicago area. So we worked really hard <laughs> to get out there and make sure everybody knew and was going to buy a ticket. And then, you know, we got out online and we were reaching out to people saying, come to Chicago. This is the place. And, you know, one of the nice things about having uh, the championships in Chicago is that if you're going to spend four days here, you're not just shuffling back and forth from your hotel to the gym. There's, yeah. there's other things to do. This is a destination anyway. Yeah. Plus, you get to go see world-class gymnastics. Exactly. So it was. Uh, we uh, we were really proud to have hosted it, and um, one of my goals for this year was to get our 2022 bid together. Yeah. But uh, goals have changed. Yeah. Um, as it, just like any other gymnastics setup, you you have one plan, and then you have to turn around and make adjustments as uh, as things come along. Yeah. Well, I just want to say that that was the best championship I had ever been to. I've been to 12, 13, and you. you guys did an outstanding job. It was, you know, the atmosphere was electric. The city was welcoming, and I couldn't ask for a better last NCAA championship for myself mm -hmm. to be at, at least a part of as a coach. And thank you very much for the work that you put into it because it was a, it was a show. And if it wasn't for the work that you guys did, I don't think it would have been like that. So thank you. Thank you. And I want to talk a little bit about, you know, your transition. You know, you were a gymnast here from the University of, mm -hmm. you know, Illinois, Chicago, and, and now you're a head coach. Can you just talk about what that means to you? Um, yeah, it, uh, um, I'm a UIC guy, right? <laughs> I'm, uh, uh, I'd like to be a lifer um, here and uh, came here in the fall of 95 after I finished high school competed on the team um, and uh, had the opportunity I stuck around as a student assistant then it was just serendipity that it came together to be able to stay on as an assistant um, and I you know it was supposed to be a couple years and I'd move on with life but um, moving on didn't seem like where I wanted to be so I stuck around and I was here I was here and then uh, when CJ Johnson retired they offered me the position and absolutely it was you know a dream come true in that sense big shoes to fill um, yeah. but it's uh, uh, but it was it was an opportunity to be at a school that part of the reason I chose UIC coming out of high school was because I saw it as it wasn't the, it wasn't the 150-year-old institution that so many other schools are. It was a place that still had to prove itself a bit, and I wanted to be on that ride um, because athletically and academically, uh, the school continues to be on the rise. I firmly believe that the future of higher education is in urban centers, like a University of Illinois at Chicago, yeah. um, and uh, we are very quickly catching up to our peers, uh, both in size and prestige and now in... Uh, in the profile of our university. Yeah, I mean, can you can you talk a little bit about this upcoming team you have, and uh, you know, what are your goals for the season? So much talent, yeah. so much talent. Yeah. That was amazing. <laughs> I I had a great job, great time watching practice. Mm -hmm. Casinos being thrown, multiple Azarian Maltese is being done on rings, which you know, at Oklahoma, 
we're we're trying to we you know they're trying to get those mm-hmm. into into their routines and you guys already have three guys that were making it happen mm-hmm. so that's pretty impressive mm-hmm. so you you must be really excited about this upcoming season oh absolutely um yeah there's the I knew with the freshman class coming in, we had a large freshman class last year and a little bit of development under their belt. Um, it's still a fairly young team, just one senior. Um, and so I knew it would be the best team we've had in several years. Um, and even beyond that, our you know our overall team success, our team record hasn't been really strong the last few years. But the difference between Oklahoma four years in a row and UIC being on the outside looking in is not as deep of a difference as you might think um you know with the small number of programs the talent doesn't get diluted right there's yeah. really talented yeah. gymnasts in our gym very true um and guys who are want to come and are paying their way just to be able to be a part of this yeah. it's, it's really amazing and that's what's so rewarding about the the, the job that i get to have yeah. um is uh to work with guys who want to be that top level get reach their maximum yeah no i i completely understand i had the opportunity to coach the, the club team at oklahoma as well and those guys you know most of them paying their way into school mm-hmm. and they're just doing it for the opportunity to yeah. be a part of that ncaa program and there's a different feel to it than the you know than scholarship athletes you know mm-hmm. they they you know they're doing it because that that is what they want to do they know they have that drive and it it was very rewarding to have that opportunity so I, I can understand what, yeah, you, what you mean yeah, yeah you definitely know it because yeah. yeah nobody's in there because it's paying for school or yeah. something else right if yeah. they're if, if somebody gets burned out and that happens yeah. right but then we talk about it and you know maybe they move on or something yeah. um and then we do have that sometimes but for the most part these guys are fired up for four years to do everything they can to break into the lineup and, and to be out there on the floor with the, the rest of the ncaa so the news about you know UIC and what's going on here really sent shockwaves throughout the you know Jamassus community. You know we're a very close community. We were just at you know University of Illinois you know interviewing Justin Spring. You know he was devastated. Can you just talk about you know what are your thoughts on everything that's going on right now? Uh, yeah, we're on day 21 since the announcement was made, um, and uh, there's a little bit of I'll say a, a, a normalcy coming back in the sense that we we still have a job to do. We still have classes to go to, we still have training to do. Um, But we're we're not, we're we're fighting this. Um, There's no doubt about it. Um, If you look at the history of gymnastics at UIC and its athletic department, you can't look at any highlight of the athletic department and not have gymnastics come into the conversation. So for a decision to be made um, where they want to move forward and not have gymnastics be a part of it is really pretty frustrating, obviously. Um, but what we have in the NCAA for gymnastics is a lack of opportunity. Um, you know, it was mentioned to me that there's, you know, there's a lack of interest. Well, that's because you have uh, maybe fewer high schools offering it, but if you look at the numbers across the last 30 years of a USA Gymnastics, it's on a consistent growth trend. Yeah. Um, more and more people are doing gymnastics. If you look at the city of Chicago, they have 10 park district gyms and they're all busting at the seams. They just opened a new one and it's full all the time. Yeah. Um, there's just not enough places to do gymnastics. It's exactly. not a question of wanting yeah. to do gymnastics. For sure. And what that does, of course, for us, when we look go out there on our competition schedule, uh, we're in a large city and UIC has some issues finding its place among, you know, the Chicago Bulls and Blackhawks and Bears and two Major League Baseball teams yeah. and things. But gymnastics is a, a unique opportunity for people to go see. And our attendance, we're not selling out the pavilion, but our attendance at our gymnastics meets beats other sports. Yeah. So, you know, it's, um, yeah. it, 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 there was a press release from the, the university talking about a variety of issues about why uh, UIC gymnastics would be dropped, and I, none of them are really valid reasons. I can very quickly come back and say, no, that's that 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 we can poke a hole in just all of them. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> I could go on with that one, but uh, that's a much longer conversation. Um, but the reality is, is that um, we need to have gymnastics at UIC uh, because of the, our location, because of the type of program that we are. Right? We can't just have um, an elite training group 
right? We need to have it expanded out so that um, so that we can find the diamonds in the rough for our national team, and we so that we can have opportunities for people to want to continue to get into the sport. Yeah. Because um, that will make the U.S. team better. Yep. Um, I think we learned a hard lesson in the '90s when we tried to think, okay, we're not going to focus on the NCAA, the NCAA will kind of do its own thing, yeah. and the national team will be, take yeah. care of itself, um, and that didn't that didn't pan out the no, way we wanted. No, didn't get results, nope. So. Uh, what's a question, uh, not a question, um, what is a message you'd like to get out there to the gymnastic community on the best way for us to be a part of the conversation mm-hmm. or actually be actively engaged and do something to help this situation out? Because, yeah. you know, the, one of the problems I've always seen in the gymnastic community, we're really close, mm-hmm. but we don't mobilize very well. Oh, so yeah, what is the absolutely. best way for us mm-hmm. to mobilize and get the most out of it, in yeah. your opinion? Yeah, so um, it's... We have to show our numbers. We have to show we're there, um, right? You can't look at a story about another program being dropped on Facebook and just say, what a shame, Yeah. right? That's, what was me is not going to get us where we need to go. Um, what we need to do right now is take and, and take some positive action steps. Um, and some of those things um, seem like they may not be that big, and they're not that hard, right? In our case for UIC, uh, you can write a letter to our athletic director, Garrett Classy. Uh, you can write a letter to the university chancellor, Michael Amaridis, um, letting them know that this is a bad decision um, and that we should correct that mistake. Um, but then beyond that, um, you know, social media, if liking something on social media is good, sharing something that you're passionate about is even better um, because that now expands we think that we're telling the world when we see when we read something or see it in our news feed there um, but we have to be sharing it with with the people that are one or two or three steps away from the sport because the people who are most affected by this and most upset about it are going to continue to be but we yeah. need to get we need to build that momentum expand that fight um, and that's not just for UIC, but that's yeah. for the NCAA yeah. athletics as, as a whole. Yeah. Um, right? Um, oh, what is his name? There's a, a posted letter um, on on Facebook from a William and Mary graduate, and uh, blanking on it, but he really eloquently stated the the importance of college athletics. And if we believe that college athletics is a thing that should be, we need to get out there and and mobilize. Um, so yeah, so you're, you're asking what can people do? So that's the that's yeah. step one is write a letter yeah, in support letter. of UIC. All right. Um, the next step is to join our flip the decision campaign, right? And then challenge some people, right? If we get a, a two hundred thousand people doing that, yeah. that gets picked up by mainstream media, and as mainstream media picks up on a story, yeah. now more people are going to find out yeah. about it. Um, because because if if you're talking about college athletics. Uh, on Sports Illustrated or ESPN, they're talking about you know football and basketball, and they're talking about concussions and paying players. Okay. Yeah. But that's not the real. But it's not what most college athletes are doing. Yeah. None of them are thinking about going pro. Yeah. Not in their sport, mm-hmm. right? They're thinking about getting an education, participating, and using collegiate athletics as a way to grow and build their character development, build their maturity, um, and be successful people down the road. Um, and we need to make sure that our university administrations and that our uh, elected officials know that that's what's valuable to us. Yeah. But uh, as we move forward too, um, um, we're, we're getting the last touches done on a, a website specifically for um, the the Save UIC Gym okay. program. Nice. Um, I'm not going to tell you the address just yet because I don't want anybody yeah. everybody going there. But it's going to yeah. we'll, we'll be pushing it out. Uh, via to let people know via email and social media and things. If you're not a part of the uh, NCAA Gymnastics Alumni Group, um, join it. Um, that way, uh, um, whether you are an alumnus of gymnastics or not, male, female, uh, because that's a great central place where yeah. things are coming through. And of course, uh, Gymnasticsville and everywhere else. So all these other things, we're going to make sure everybody knows. Um, but uh, but I, what I would like to see is that the cause for UIC leads right into the cause for college athletics and yeah. college gymnastics. Um, that this is a call to arms and a call to action for everybody in the gymnastics world. That um, that that not only are we gonna, along the way of saving UIC, we're gonna change the conversation, is what I'd like. I'd yeah. like it so that, you know, if we have 
thousand people calling ESPN radio at three o'clock on a Tuesday yeah, that, who want to talk about gymnastics, yeah. well, they're going to have to stop talking about whatever nonsense yeah, they're talking they're gonna about have to start... and, and change the conversation. Yep. And we have the power to do that. We, we have do. to, you said it though, Rocky, that we, we have to mobilize well. Yeah. Um, I'm going to steal a lot of things from the wrestling playbook. They, 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 they've learned how to do it. They did. Um, and Mike Moyer is, is pretty incredible and uh, um, I've had some conversations with him yeah. just in the last few weeks too. Yeah. Um, and, um, and you know, I think we're doing the right thing, but we got to keep following through. Yeah. So, as I said, yeah, sometimes goals change. Uh, but I'm not going to be making that, uh, putting together that bid for the 2022 NCAA championships just yeah. yet. Just yet. Um, but uh, but I'm going to dive right in. And some of the groundwork that we laid um, for the championships last year, bringing people in and making connections to some alumni. Yeah. Right. There are 250 programs. That's yeah. Essentially, 235 programs worth of alumni yeah. who have no no, alu- no 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 place to turn their support to yeah. because it's no longer there. Yeah. So we can turn this around. Um, I feel that that can be done, but we've got to we've got to be active participants. Well, um, it, it's never a good thing to say this, but if there was any program that would ha- be in this situation. I'm happy it's yours because you are the perfect person to be able to go through this. <laughs> you know, no, no, I'm just be, I'm just like I said, you would never wish this on anyone, yeah. on anyone, but I've always been impressed with you, you know, right when I got to Oklahoma as a coach and being in all the meetings, you had always come in with new ideas and were, you know, you knew where you were at amongst the NCAA, but you were a voice and you always spoke very knowledgeably and you guys are going to get through this. I know that because you put in the work, you do the hours, and I know that you're a strong enough force in this sport and personality to get through this and then you know maybe change the complexion of where men's gymnastics is going i honestly believe that thank you yeah, yeah. i uh, <laughs> i kind of thought to myself you know I, I didn't certainly didn't ask for this and i don't know if i'm the right guy but i'm here and yeah. so um uh, you know we gotta I, last night it kind of came to mind that you know we've got to put a line in the sand and just say no we're stopping this this is no longer acceptable yeah. that that the decisions of a very small group of, of administrators can have such a large ripple effect. Yeah. Um, and that's not just at UIC, but that's across the board. You know, we had to fight back against Cal yeah. just, yeah. what, seven years ago. Yeah. Um, and it's it's not easy, um, but they were successful. And I want to be successful with it. But then, right, that we carry it to that next step. Yeah. That, uh, uh, because cause I I, I know it. I think my team, they're fans, right? Yeah. yeah. They, they, they're listening to the podcast. They're pulling up video. They're saying, did you see this? Did you do that? Yeah. Whatever else. And that's an amazing thing, especially in our sport, because you can see somebody doing something, you know, from across the globe yeah. and you get a sense like that was really awesome. First, yeah. you know, somebody hits a home run. What well, was it? A good pitcher? I don't know. You know, what's yeah. happening? A lot there? of variables. Um, yep. Versus, yeah, you see a Coleman, and you're like, yeah, yeah. that was awesome. He right? did that. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah, yeah, impressive. Um, and uh, and so technology is, is is I'll say catching up with our sport. Maybe that's yeah. the way to put it. Um, and so we we have an opportunity for engagement. I think that hasn't always been there. Yeah, you know? I mean, and you guys are doing it right now with what we're talking about right here. This yeah. this wasn't a thing ten years ago. Yeah, you know. Um, it was it was smaller conversations and not being able to you know you talk to somebody and you're like yeah we're gonna change the world yeah. and then <laughs> just, <laughs> just, just it's a, exactly change the room exactly yeah. <laughs> so that was one of the reasons why you know we really wanted to do this but I want to talk a little bit about too the Windy City invite because that that affects a lot of junior junior level athletes and since I've been in sport for a while Windy City is one of like the top five jail meets in mm-hmm. the country like everyone loves. Um, coming so can you just talk a little bit about that that competition yeah um uh, well this year will be the 49th windy city invitation 49 yeah. years the so oldest meet in the country um biggest meet 49 years of the ncaa competition uh the junior competition will be entering its 22nd year um wow. but it's uh, over a thousand junior athletes from across north america uh and from a you know at the point of being uic that's incredible to bring that many kids to the UIC campus um, and to make them aware of this university. Um, 
you know, <laughs> certainly I've been making that argument for a while. But uh, but yeah, we've been doing that meet for a long time, and I have no intention of that meet stopping um, beyond okay. this next year. Gotcha. Um, so eat the junior or the NCAA meet. Um, Right, we have a primary goal, obviously, of reinstating our program. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, there's a lot of groundwork being laid for contingency plans. Yeah. Um, I think you always you have to be prepared for that. Um, if you're not, then you know, um, you're you're not doing a good a service to yourself or your your team. I don't know how that'll work out, so yep. <laughs> I can't answer anything more about that. But that Windy City, it is the most naturally attended. Uh, it, athletic event at UIC. Wow. Year, the single event. Um, <laughs> right? Because we, we don't have, you know, we're not busing people in or anything else, right? Yeah. We bring a couple thousand people to campus. I'm thinking this year is going to be real big again. Yeah. We're going to be making a big push uh, for that attendance, and we've got plenty of seats, so that's not an issue. Yeah. Um, we used to have that as a problem. We ran out of yeah. seats within our old venue, um, but the pavilion has plenty of them. And so that me it's it feels it's the start of the year, but it feels a lot like a, a Big Ten championship yeah. or an NCAA championship. It is loud. It's it's uh, high energy, um, and uh, this year we're adjusting the format a little bit. We were able to get push through uh, some changes in the uh, NCAA rules, so the um, high level juniors will actually compete at the same time on a separate set of equipment um, nice. as the NCAA cool. meets. So nice. it will really be a uh, uh, <laughs> a 12 ring circus almost oh, yeah. right and so we're going to try to follow the um, setup from uh, from the NCAAs to try to keep it so that there's not just too much going oh, on at once, but nice. we also don't want it to end up be a yeah. three hour meet so yeah. we're going to have to balance that a little bit but uh, uh, we're, all, we're also I'm working with our um, audio visual folks so that we can have a live stream very similar to the NCAA championship nice. new, new because, ideas still um, crazy yeah, it, it, amongst it, all it, everything, amongst play everything play you're going through yeah. you're still coming up with new ideas for a competition yeah, that's we, amazing we've got, it, it, <laughs> gymnastics is fun to watch it is right? we it need is. to get it out there for it people is. to see it is um, and uh, yeah so yeah I do want you to come to the pavilion in, on January 19th but if you can't be uh, there will be a, a link to watch the uh, watch the live stream with commentary um, and switching switching awesome. events. So we're highlighting, you know, yeah. when when the, the real marquee athletes yeah. are up there, um, and it'll be it'll be real real uh, play by play, right? Nice. Discussion of the skills and was that really good and why it wasn't or why everything else. Awesome. Um, and uh, so I'm excited for that, and I think we're going to be able to make that work. And uh, um, and obviously that'll be a nice enhancement, I think, to the meet. Um, but uh, but yeah, for, for people to be able to see just the energy that's in that room yeah. um, will be great too. Um, but I also think that uh, you know we did a nice job, I think, of getting a lot of people to Chicago for the championships this yep. year. I think it's mm -hmm. hard to say, hey, everybody come out every year. So yeah. my goal um, for the 2019 championships that'll be down in Urbana-Champaign is if you can't make it to Urbana, you should be out there. You should be getting together for the live stream. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, um, right. Get up your whole gym together. Watch yeah. the live stream. Right. You're out in California and you graduated from Michigan State in 1998. Yeah. Call your five teammates who are out there and sit down together. Right. Or go out to you know, uh, get out to a bar, get out to a place in public and make them yeah. turn on sports. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Um, nice. And um, you know, there's a lot of I think concern. You know that the national championships aren't on ESPN or NBC anymore. And yeah, I lament that too, but they used to show it at like 10 o'clock on a Tuesday morning. So <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure that we lost a whole lot. We lost that yeah. a while ago. Yeah. Um, but if we ever have want to get back to that, we have to be able to show, hey, there are people who are yeah. going to tune Viewership. in and watch Absolutely. this. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and so yeah, the, the options with the live stream at the national championships have really gotten really gotten great. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, I'd like to follow that. And then um, we certainly stream our meets on Facebook Live and things, the dual meets, but we'll have a little more formal setup for the uh, for the Windy City. So nice. excited for that. Um, and we'll ha we're will we adding Washington. The okay. Washington's club team is yeah. going to come out this year um, to add to the field. Um, so that's going to be exciting, too, and a little bit of a different change of pace there. Nice. Um, 
and uh, yeah, you know, you guys saw what, what we, the kind of talent we've got in the gym. If we can put it together, you know, we've got 30% of a routine, you know, three solid great skills. If we can get the next seven to fall into place uh, over these next couple months, um, you know, it'll be nice to be to be knocking on the door yeah, of uh, sure. some of those big 10 teams again. It's been a little while. Yeah, you definitely will be. Uh, I was amazed by the talent you have, and you definitely, you know, you said it there at the very beginning about, you know, the, 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 the difference between a your program and what you have now in Oklahoma is not is the distance isn't what most people would assume mm -hmm. you know I, I you know I was in the gym all the time I just you know just left coaching at Oklahoma yeah. and I'm watching like all right oh you we didn't have anyone on our team catch a casino I saw it today at your gym. Twice. Twice. So, you know, you got guys in Oklahoma trying to learn his Iron Maltese. Mm -hmm. You guys got two of them already doing it. So it's like, you know, it, it's you're very accurate on when it comes to that difference. Yeah. You know, so, you know, I wish you all the best this season. You have the talent, you know, um, go for it. Go yeah, for it. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, with our situation, there's a little extra motivation. They're always yeah. hard driving. But yeah. uh, but if this if this is it. Uh, we're going out swinging, you yeah. know, in every sense of the word. Um, out on the competition floor, pushing and fighting to, for that reinstatement. Uh, whatever, whatever we can try to do, to to, it, it, you know, to do what they these guys all came here to do, yeah. right? To achieve their their top potential. Um, and you know, if there's a silver lining to all of this, they're 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 dealing with an adversity that you know is. Well, unfortunately, has been at a lot of teams, but you know, isn't always there for people. And as they balance that, you know, this is going to make them stronger people. Yeah. But yeah. you know, I also want to be able to provide this similar opportunity for the ten-year-olds that are out there, who are, um, who are thinking about do it, continuing this sport. And when you know your back hurts, or you have to have that surgery, or you're six weeks in a cast, um, you know, why is it worth it to come back? Yeah. Um, and uh, uh, you know, college gymnastics is one of those few opportunities, especially on the men's side, yeah. where you can continue after you're 18. Yeah. Um, if you're an elite, true elite athlete, you know, you can continue, and there's opportunities to continue training. Um, but USAG isn't in a position to really be able to support that. Yeah. Um, it's got to come from scholastic programs. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, so, you know, we're going to close it out, but I just want to let, you know, everyone know, the gymnastics fans, that this is the time. This is the time for 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 the community to show their passion or love for the sport. I see it all the time with, with college football fans and things of that nature, and I feel like our fans need to be like that. And they are, because, you know, everyone I, I come across, they love gymnastics, but now it's time to get up, go to a gymnastics event, you know, support College Men's Gymnastics, support UIC. Write that you know, letter. Write the letter. Is there any donations or anything? Are you guys are at we're, that we're, point yet? or We're putting, money's always an answer, yeah. um, but we haven't been given really a number yet. So we're putting together a pledge campaign and that will be a part of our website. Okay. Um, but but I, we also don't want to have people sending in money that isn't going to make a difference there necessarily. Gotcha. Um, but, uh, but a pledge campaign will give us the opportunity for people to show their support, and then we'll come chasing you down if, we, if, it, if the university decides that that okay. is a, 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 way, a solution for this. Okay. Um, but, uh, but right now, it's about, it's about being an active supporter, right? Yeah, get a letter out. Let, let them know that, that our numbers aren't dwindling and that our passion is strong. All right, and that's a wrap. You know, Charlie Nelson, I want you to thank you for allowing us to come here. It's been great talking to you and just seeing all the guys do their thing. Yeah. Hopefully we have more to come. Thanks, man. Thanks, Patrick. All right, Jamazaville, Voice of Acrobatics. We'll see you all next time.